Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to If My Heart Had Wings. We are about to find out what Idaho wants to talk to Katori about. ガレージに行くのいつも楽しみにしてたんでしょきっと毎日が今日みたいだよだからあんねエカ closed her mouth and waited for a reply there is no mistake that Katori was ambivalent she was certainly interested in gliders so I think she would actually really like to join the soaring club Oh no, is she actually going to drop out? That's why now she might be able to express those feelings. But why? Agatha's expression dropped at Katori's blunt refusal. Yeah. そんなだからクラスでも浮いちゃうんだって思わない。Hold it. Calm down both of you. Why are you arguing all of a sudden? I step in. So they can't ignore me. After we had such a fun day, let's just cut it. Whoa! I got pushed me aside like I was in her way. Whoa. No good. It looks like she's quite pissed off about the kissing up comment. この間のことはみんなが悪いって思うよ。あんな風に言われたら、ハバネさんが怒るのも当然だもん。けど、ハバネさんにだって悪いところがあったと思う。Aga pointed her finger at Katori's face as if to say, There! Irrefutable evidence. She really is, Katori. That's もっと普通に打ち解ければいいじゃんか。うん。She's Ooh, really? Faltering for a moment from hearing Katori's words, Agha stayed tight lipped. Her cheeks went red. Uh, uh, is, is, is that really the reason? それとも私のことが可哀想だから親切にしてくれてたの？そういうの。もううんざりなのよ。Oh, Katori just doesn't want to feel different. She doesn't want to be treated differently just because she's in a wheelchair. Katori told her and turned her wheelchair sideways. Sayonara. Ah, hey. With that, she left by herself. Agaha. But... That's not the reason why you did it, though, is it? Aren't you also being misunderstood? <sighs> oh, no. Tori's angry. Aga's upset. I don't know what's happening. Aga, this time looking like she didn't want to talk, with trembling shoulders, climbed the gentle slope. 
I watched her from behind as she left and then hurried, hurried back to the dormitory. Oh. Katori. Hey, Katori. Hato <laughs> came out as if to protest about the noise. Hey, is your buddy in there? <laughs> Get out of the way, will ya? I move Hato out of the way and take a peek into Katori's room through the duck door. Damn, Hato's in the way. I can't see. <laughs> Ah, Kanako, has you come back yet? Where'd she go then? Yeah, kind of. Um, can I ask you to prepare dinner? Please. Uh, it's making some noodles. It's all fine. It's all good. All the girls will like it. Where is she? That's not what it looks like, though. I call out to her, but without surprise, Katori looks at me for a moment before quickly looking back at the lake. At night, the lake looks like a vast black mass of darkness lying sideways. On the other side is Windmill Hill, which looks beautiful when illuminated. Okay, it wasn't me. Um, it just went straight to here, like, it, it didn't even have a scene of trying to find her. Oh, okay. Since she hadn't come back to the dormitory, I guessed that she might be here, and this is where I found her. What are you doing here? A self-assessment? I say it in a light-hearted way, but she doesn't answer. Let's go back. It's almost time for dinner. Tori shook her head. She knew. She knows! She knows that Kanako is making dinner. You can't stay here, can you? No, I don't say that. I need you, Katori, to, to help me prepare meals. And a friend. Why not? Because today was so much fun. She mumbled quietly as her cheeks quivered for a moment. What do you mean? Oh, I was, I was right. Oh my gosh, this story was made for me. This game was made for me. Me to, to just say what's gonna happen. It sounded like she was getting tearful. Aww. Aww. Katori. Yes, that's true. You can't round off a fun day with an argument. For me too, today was an unbelievably fun day. It was like being a kid again, playing stupid pranks from sun up till sundown. Right now, the thing that makes me feel a little pleased is the fact that I know that Katori feels the same way. About Agaha, I didn't see the things that happened in the class so I can't really say but she's a simple person so I don't think she would have done what the teacher asked if she didn't want to. <sighs> However, even if she hadn't been asked, she's the type who would just do it anyway. That sometimes causes problems though, right? I said jokingly and Katori smiled just a little. <laughs> and today, she wasn't asked to, but she skipped school with us, didn't she? That was the first time she had skipped school, and only stuck with us because that's how things turned out. She's not a bad person, maybe she really thinks that she wants to be your friend. That's what I think. I think so too. I'm like Aoi's uh, second personality. 
Even Agatha wouldn't go this far just for the sake of being kind. Hmm? Uh, uh oh. How? So is Kotori just regretting a lot of things or or just depressed because of this? I could see that. Really? I imagine Katori jumping up from the floor and launching an attack on the opponent's court. No doubt about it. She would have been brilliant. Spectacular. Really? What kind of school doesn't have, have like, um, modified, uh, transportation for students like her? Hmm. A step of as little as 5 centimeters is a huge obstacle for a wheelchair. ここに通うことさえこんなんになった。怪我する前のような生活。他がみんなでハンバーガー食べに行ったり、服を買いに行ったり。そんな当たり前のことが何一つできなくなった。ああ。仲の良かった友達は気がつくと。みんな離れて行ってたわ。一緒に遊べないんだから当然よね。Because you were disabled and they didn't want to deal with it? Wow, what what such jerks? I can't be true. If they were your friends, if they were your friends, they wouldn't care. They can still hang out with you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's thank you, Aoi. I think that might just be oversimplifying things, though. At the very least, that is her actual experience of it. あるとき、ホームルームで私がみんなから孤立してるのに気づいた先生がこう言ったの。ハバネさんはかわいそうな子なんです。もっと仲良くしてあげましょう。Uh. Usually, I'm not sure how things usually go with that. Usually, it's not great. すごいショックだった。自分がどんな境遇にいるのか思い知らされて。ああ。その後一人でこっそり泣いたわ。悔しくて情けなくて。そんな風に気を使われるのが嫌で嫌でしょうがなかった。Yeah, just getting slowly being treated differently, just... It doesn't help your self-esteem at all. Tori's hands were trembling as she held onto the hem of her skirt. It looked like the frustration of that time had come back to haunt her. It's okay, Katori, I'm here. ここへ来たの。完全バリアフリーの学校なら誰にも迷惑をかけず一人でやっていけるって。At our school, Katori can go there by herself and can get into and out of the classroom without anyone's help. Yeah, you cannot really... I mean, you can if you're just into studying and that's all you want to do. But without any socializing, you... Ooh, it's just, just not a good place with your 
psychological and mental health. It's not just a physical problem, it's a social environment and you can't get by without being involved with other people. Man, I was just taking the words out of my... or what I just said. <laughs> oh, the two things I helped you with. She murmured as she spoke and looked across to Windmill Hill on the other bank. The composed forms of the giant windmills seemed to have a calming effect on her. That would be pretty tiring, wouldn't it? Yeah, you really tried keeping it all to yourself, not really looking for anyone. I do. I agreed from the bottom of my heart. I can't just say something simple like, try even harder. Yeah, that's a stupid term to say. No, it's not. It looks like we might be able to do something. I just hope we make it in time, though. That's <gasps> Maybe I think that I think that notebook is where that diary is Amane's. Maybe she was in that in the dorm before Katori came. Because I don't see any of the other girls uh, in school, so maybe that's why she hasn't. That's why we don't really, you know, say anything about it. Tori narrows her eyes as she speaks. She looks across to the sky above Windmill Hill. Hey, you, uh, don't really want to quit school, do you? So I'd be worried too. Wait, what? Tori smiled when she said that, but to me, it looked like she was forcing herself to smile. I think in her heart she doesn't want to go. She doesn't want to leave. I sat next to Tori and just like her, looked at the view of the opposite bank. Before I came back to Kazigwara, I was in the cycle racing club at a school really far from here. When I started to speak, she glanced at me and didn't say anything while she listened to me. There are sports scholarships for bicycling too, you know. I train desperately daily to win races and to be exempt from paying tuition fees. The practice was seriously tough, but reading the bike, but riding the bike felt good, so it didn't really feel like such hard work. Bicycle road races are incredibly tiring. In a big competition, you cycle 100 kilometers in one day. 100km? I like riding the bike, but I'm not that crazy riding 100 kilometers. It is, isn't it? Also, you had to go over hills on the way. Hill climbing is complete hell. While climbing, I always wanted to give up. But after climbing it, cycling down the hill feels amazing. I, I would not try it, Tori, now, now, while you're in the wheelchair to just go down a big hill. I couldn't tell if Katori was impressed or envious when she responded. That part is fun, so that's why I thought I'd try racing. In one competition, I came third. I nod with pride. Actually, that is one of the few things that I can be proud of. Anchan came to watch. I was really happy about that. But then I got greedy. In the first race of the second year, I had an accident. While in the middle of the downhill section, I was involved with another bike that had fallen down, of all things. In that situation, I was competing with several other bikers. I was in a hurry to get to the front and got too close to another bike. Then the accident occurred. The other bike suddenly lost its balance and I got tangled up with it and hit the asphalt while traveling at high speed. 
Ooh, those are the worst. With a bitter smile, I roll up the leg of my pants on the right leg and show her. The accident in my life as a racer ended all too soon. The scar from the surgery is still fresh. Tori looked at it and seemed to be at a loss for words. If it were her, she would be able to say that she got away with just this scar. With, re with rehabilitation, I was able to walk again. I now have no problems with everyday life. Even the doctors were amazed. But I can't ride a bike anymore. I nod quietly. I was a scholarship student, so it was hard for me to be there after I withdrew from school, but I could have stayed there. However, my friends from the cycle racing club were there, and I would watch them practicing. While I watched them doing their best from afar, I was unable to live a normal life. My leg recovered after the rehabilitation, but instead I felt really depressed. I thought that it would have been better if I couldn't move at all because I could have just given up on it. It was painful and difficult, and I didn't know how to handle all of my unfocused thoughts. That's why I came back. I ran away back to my hometown. Somehow I felt a sense of relief and I wrapped the story. Now that I think about it, this is the first time I've spoken to Katori about this. I haven't even confided in Agaha and the others about this. That is absolutely true. But running away will not solve anything. gotta face it. Face it and do it. But have a sense of happiness while you do it. No. The things that Katori says to comfort me are actually really pessimistic. That must be how she really feels. However, I didn't tell her this because I wanted to be comforted. There are still things I want to say. There are some things that I realized from running away. There's nowhere else to go. Yep. There's nowhere left to run to. It's like a dead end. But I cannot see the way forward either. You took a Tori. There is a way. I thought I would regret it. Running away, I mean. But it wasn't like that. My hometown is the same as it always was. It kindly welcomed me back. That makes it even worse. The warmth in my hometown. It makes me forget my pain and impatience. It feels like I'm gradually being paralyzed. The pain. The importance of the things I'd lost. I'm forgetting them little by little. If I lose that, will I still be me? Yeah. I'm excited to think that I could fly in it. I envision myself flying through the air as I look to the night sky. After that, Katori looks down. Do you have something like that? Something ahead of you if you quit school and go back to your hometown? Katori looked at me like she was in shock. She desperately tried to hold back the tears that were welling up and about to fall from her eyes. Whether something lay ahead or not, I realized then that she had a deep conflict within, even more than I thought she had. You don't think there is anything ahead, do you? That's why if you have nothing left to do, everything is over? Oh. You want a bath, I'll help you get in. If you get a puncture, I'll fix it for you. I'll help you if you need it, so... Tear ran down Katori's cheek. But it was only a single tear. But you're, you're not a burden. Oh man, this it was such a sad, sad episode. Uh, we'll see if I actually give it back to her or not in the next video, everybody. So everyone, thank you for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like and subscribe. That'd be so awesome of you guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video, everybody.